So there are four debaters on this stage, only one of which was born in Toronto, Canada. <laughs> that, should, <laughs> that should not be the only reason you vote for our team. It should be a major reason. <laughs> now, I was a socialist in college. I read magazines like The Nation. If you go to YouTube and search David Brooks, Milton Friedman, you'll see a 21-year-old socialist David Brooks debating Milton Friedman on TV. I had these big 1980s glasses that look like they're on loan from the Mount Palomar Lunar Observatory. <laughs> and even today, I get the appeal of socialism and alternatives to capitalism. Why do we have to live with such inequality and poverty? Why can't we put people over profits? Socialism is the most compelling secular religion of all time. My socialist sympathy, sympathies did not survive long when I became a journalist. I quickly noticed the government officials I was covering were not capable of planning the society they hoped to create. It wasn't because they were stupid or bad. Society is just complicated. I came to realize that capitalism is really good at doing something socialism is really bad at, creating a learning process to help people figure stuff out. If you want to run a rental car company, capitalism has a whole bevy of market and price signals that tells you what kind of par cars people want to rent, how many cars to order, where do you put locations. It has a competitive profit-driven process to motivate you to learn and innovate every day. That's the biggest single difference. Socialist planned economies interfere with price and other market signals in a million ways. They suppress the profit motives that drives people to, be, to learn and improve. It doesn't matter how big your computer is, you can never gather all the relevant data from a central place. The state cannot even see the tiny, irregular, local, context-driven variables that make all the difference. The state cannot predict people's desires. Capitalism creates a relentless learning system. Socialism doesn't. The sorts of knowledge capitalism produces are often not profound, but they produce enormous wealth. All of human history is basically a flat living standard till capitalism, now a 10,000 rise, 10,000% rise. The Fraser Institute, a free market think tank that ranks nations according to the things that free market think tanks like, less regulation, free trade, secure poverty. The freest capitalist economies in the world are Hong Kong, US, Canada, Ireland, Latvia, Denmark, Mauritius, Malta, and Finland. In these three countries, the per capita income is 36,770. In the least free, it's $6,000. In the most free economies, people live to be 79.4 years. In the least free, it's 65. Over the past century, planned economies have produced enormous amounts of poverty and scarcity. What's worse is what happens when political elites realize what they can do with a scarcity. They can sell it. If things are scarce in such a system, you have to bribe people to get it. Soon everybody's bribing. Citizens soon realize the whole system is a fraud. Socialism produces more economic and political economy than capitalism because the real rulers turn into gangsters. A system that begins in high idealism, ends in corruption, dishonesty, oppression. Now, some parts of our economic system are in good shape. Wages in this country are rising 4.5% a year. But I became not a free market, I've never been a libertarian free market, or I'm a Whig. My hero is Alexander Hamilton, who's a Puerto Rican hip hop star from New York. Uh, <laughs> he came into a country with the land rich oligarchs like Thomas Jefferson had all sorts of means to control wealth. So he said, we need to create broader and fairer fat capitalism. He created credit markets to do that. My next hero is Abraham Lincoln, who gave more speeches about banks than about slavery. He said, I want poor boys and girls like me to rise and succeed. We need to create railroads. We need to create the land grant colleges so we can educate people to become capitalists. The final wig in American politics is Teddy Roosevelt, who loved the energy capitalism developed and knew you sometimes have to limit capitalists so everybody can be a, a fair capitalist. Capitalism, like all human systems, has problems. And you could persuade me to do a lot of things to fix them. We need worker reforms. We need worker co-ops to build skills and represent labor at the negotiating table. We need wage subsidies so people are not swept away by the creative destruction of the free market. We need a carbon tax to use capitalism me mechanisms to fight global warming. We need wage subsidies. And all these ideas I've just cited 
come from places like the American Enterprise or the Brookings Institution that are supposedly the detritus of, of economic neoliberalism. The big mistake those of us on the conservative side made was to equate all government action as part of one thing. But government action comes in two varieties. There's supporting government action, which helps people become better capitalists. And then there's regulation, which gets in the gears of capitalism and screws things up. In Scandinavia, they do a lot of supporting capitalism and they have completely free economies, extremely free economies. They can only afford the supporting capitalism because they have free capitalist economies. The answer is found in fixing our economy, making a wider capitalist economy, a fairer capitalist economy, not something else. Thank you. Thank you.